state of foster care in Buncombe County right now, we have approximately 250 children in foster care at any given point in time. Um, and those children who are in foster care have experienced some type of abuse or neglect or have been abandoned um, by their family. So um, we're working with children and their families who are working to mend and heal. Um, and that's a task that's ongoing. And I'd say that right now we have, with Buncombe County, um, our public agency, we have approximately 90 to 95 um, families, licensed foster families at any given point in time. That doesn't quite match up with 250 children in foster care. My name is Brenda Mills and I'm a foster parent. What prompted me to become a foster parent is that I met a friend in 90, um, I believe it was 98, and she mentioned to me about, I think you'd be a good foster parent, and I said, no way. So she literally talked to me about it until the time I went to, uh, made inquiries about taking the class in 2010, 11. And, um, and then from there, just a curiosity about making sure that my assumptions about foster care were either right or wrong. And the other thing is that our community has a great need of, um, I, think it, I think in a six month period I'd heard about several children who had failed to thrive or you know, had been hurt and whatever, and they could have been in my home. My name is Christy and my husband and I have adopted four children out of foster care. Um, my husband and I were, um, we had talked about adoption before we were married and we just knew that that would be part of our lives someday. A friend that my husband worked with had just recently adopted out of foster care and, was, and had a positive experience. And so we decided that we would um, foster for a while until we figured out our uh, fertility issues. And about nine months into having our first foster placement, we found out that it's a genetic fertility problem and that biological children um, would not be possible that would be related to both of us. And so we were sitting there with a nine-month-old in our lap. We were fostering, and we just knew that that was the path we were supposed to take. My name is Sarah Anderson, and I'm a foster parent. What made me um, decide to become a foster parent was a friend of mine's. Um, they had wanted children and couldn't have children, and someone had suggested to them that they become foster parents. And they were just kind of just telling me some of the things about the child that they had and how they really enjoyed it. And it was another avenue for them instead of just having biological kids, which they couldn't have, that they could have foster kids. And I just thought it was great that, you know, they wanted children of their own, but they found a child that they could love just as much as having a biological child. So it really made me interested in becoming a foster parent. Hi, I'm Robin Cuellar. And I'm James Cuellar. And we are foster and adoptive parents. We first considered becoming um, adoptive parents um, and went ahead through the classes and did everything we could uh, trying to, I guess, jump through the hoops to adopt this little girl and unfortunately that fell through. But in the meantime, we became licensed and then we got a phone call to do foster care. The way I got started is one of my friends and her husband were looking to foster to adopt. And by meeting their foster kids, I realized the kids are awesome. And all they need is attention and love, and they just want to be loved. So that got me initially started. Then with the Junior League of Asheville, I was community VP president. And the Child Watch tour, their uh, topic was permanency for children. And so then you realize that it the children need a safe place to be and to, um, you know, to have a bedroom and just a safe place to be while all the, the challenges are being worked out with whatever the family situation is. And I realized I have a room. I'm single, but I still have a room in my house and kids and I get along great, so I can contribute and I can do something. The most common question um, asked when people call about becoming a foster parent um, is what does it take to become a foster parent? Usually they want to know um, if, is there some sort of training that they have to go through? Is there a cost um, to that training and how long will it take? Because um, usually when people call they're really excited 
and uh, want to get started right away. So um, the answer to that question is that it takes, um, it's free, the training's absolutely free, and it's um, provided by our agency. We have orientation, and that's a short session where you can just come out and learn about um, what it takes to become a foster parent. Um, and then the training class itself is a 30-hour class um, that is free as well. Now, the one thing I would say about the class is if the licensed workers don't feel that you it might not be a good match for you to be a foster parent, they'll let you know that. So you won't be in 30 hours of class and then all of a sudden they say, we don't think this is the right fit for you. In the process of that, they also give you like a profile. And it is very long. They ask you a lot of personal questions, so you need to be prepared for that. You gotta consider you're taking on children who are not yours, they're minors. Um, they have to know that you're not a homicidal maniac as well. <laughs> and um, have done it before because I've had you know, high level jobs where I've had to do that before. Um, fill that out, I had to be fingerprinted, um, I had to have my home, and I will say this, there's pluses to this because I'd never had a fire inspection in my home. It was great, I knew my house was safe. Um, I bought a fire extinguisher, the fire marshal helped me pick a fire extinguisher out, it was free, I didn't have to pay anything You know, being in the county. Um, I also had to take, before I could get a placement, not get licensed, I had to have a, um, a CPR and first aid class, so that was great. I've had those over the years. So it's always good to know that, just for my own self and for helping other people. They talk about everything. There's not a subject that is left untouched that they don't make the foster parents become aware of. So they kind of prepare you, they give you your training, you have to have your first aid, your CPR, you have to have so many credit hours to even knowing what to do and expect as a foster parent. So in actuality, they, they, they really prepare you as much as they possibly can. They really give you real scenarios about, you know, children. They have people come in that are foster parents to tell you about what it's like to have a foster child. So they try to prepare you as much as they possibly can. Training is important for uh, lots of reasons. Um, so oftentimes as parents, if you have children, you'll make a decision about whether you want your child to stay with someone based on your relationship with them. Usually you know somebody over a long period of time and you've learned to trust them and who they are. So our training course is 30 hours um, and that gives us just that small window of time to get to know people and for them to get to know us. So unless we build that relationship and um, begin to get to know people, um, we can't trust them to take care of our children. So that 30 hour class allows us time to do that. I went through MAP class, it's a 30 hour MAP class, and you sit there and you question, is fostering right for me? What kind of situations will I take or not take? And so you have 10 weeks, three hours each class, to decide, is this the right thing for me or not? Um, so it's a long process, it's about six months, so it's not, you, you don't raise your hand and then get a foster kid the next day. There's a lot of work that goes into making sure it's going to work for you. We had an exercise where we had a blind child and we had to think about would we be willing to take a blind child and I would be willing to do that but I'm not willing to take children who have diapers and so you going through the process you make up your mind on what kind of child are you willing to accept or not and so for me that's also why I'm a level one foster parent is because I don't want to deal with all the medical issues and challenges that level two foster children bring to the table. That was it was, it was hard. Um, not so much the class material, but just the emotional roller coaster they, they kind of put you through to make sure, you know, you're going into this with your eyes wide open, which hindsight, I really appreciate that they do that. Because um, they could just make it all fluffy and, you know, rainbows and lollipops, and then you find out it's not like that in the real world. <laughs> No, the biggest training is when you don't have kids, is having to take care of them, learn how to take care of them, mm -hmm. um, and what to do when they show up in your home. We it's came into it with no children of our own, and uh, so we were completely new to parenting, and, um, but fortunately we had people to call. <laughs> so, With other foster parents, uh, we can call each other. We have 
meetings where we meet together. Um, there are activities that they have for the children that give all of the foster parents the opportunity to sit down and talk and discuss some of the things that we're going through. Um, with me working with teens, so a lot of the things that I attend, are meetings that I attend, are activities that they have, primarily deal with teenagers. So it's nice to hear what's going on in one foster parent home and what's going on in another foster parent home and well, how did you handle it and how did you handle it? Well, did it work when you tried this or did it not work? So, you know, we just get a lot of feedback from each other and what we think that can help one person may not help the other foster parent, but it's just a great avenue just to have someone to talk to and can understand what you're going through as a foster parent. Um, I think it allows you to have someone say, hey, this is going on in this case, and you know, not being too specific because of confidentiality, but just to say, you know, this is going on, what should I do, or these are my feelings towards this, you know, what should I do, kind of thing, and just talking with other foster parents about um, you know, if they've been in the same boat, or just sharing their stories because um, if you're already adopted, it's not a confidential problem. And so when you share your story with other foster parents, they can relate and say, oh yeah, we're going through something similar, and I think that helps. Mm -hmm. Some of the resources that foster pa families will have once they become licensed foster parents is they'll have their own licensing social worker here in Buncombe County. Um, and that social worker is there to support them, to help them gain more skills and knowledge in an area, to help navigate the system. So they have one licensing social worker who's assigned to them specifically. Um, other supports that they have, the child also has a social worker um, who's there. Um, there's a guardian ad litem program who uh, works on behalf of the child in the child's best interest. Um, and then you have wraparound services from all the providers. Oftentimes kids do have mental health needs and so usually you'll have the support of a mental health provider as well. And so all these people um, make a team. And it's really important, one of the most important pieces is, is, is the birth family and the family where the child came from. Um, and we have something called shared parenting where we encourage families to get to know each other so that we're all on the same page supporting a child. So all of those people make that support system up. I think the most challenging aspect is the appointments and um, meeting with the GAL, the child social worker, the licensing so, um, social worker, and just lots of meetings and back and forth and the team meetings and there's a lot involved in having a child in your home and all the regulations that you have to keep up with, the medicine logs, the fire inspections, the, the lot of paperwork things that you um, are responsible for, for keeping up with. And then the heartache of, you know, seeing parents, birth parents who love their children but for one reason or another are not able to take care of that child. The challenge is, is figuring out who this person is that lives in my house because I didn't live with him the first 14 years of his life. And so trying to figure out what motivates him, you know, because now I have a teenager. I said, no teenagers, no boys, and I took a five foot nine, 200 pound teenager. And so trying to figure out what motivates him, what what does he like to eat? It's as simple as um, I have a child who has uh, asthma. So how do you deal with a child with asthma? It's been all of those things. And sometimes you turn around and you're wore out, you know, because now I have a job. Um, and I'm trying to make sure that I don't neglect myself in the process of that. And so we, we're doing well now. I think um, being the most challenging thing about being a foster parent for me has not really been getting too attached to a child. Um, we are foster parents. Um, some of these children are not going to be in our homes um, all the time. And sometimes I think you have to separate your emotions and really realize that what you're doing is you're actually fostering. You're providing a safe place for a child to be during the duration that the child is going to be in your home. And there's just sometimes there's a child that just, just tugs at your heart and you you find, try to stay emotionally unattached, which we can get emotionally involved, but there's sometimes there's just a child that just really gets under your skin and you f find out that 
you know, you just love them and, you know, you want to keep them, you want to keep them safe, you want to advocate for them, you know, you question yourselves about the child going back home to the parent. You know, so I think that's one of my greatest challenges. The biggest misconception about being a foster parent is that the birth family is somehow scary and it would be a great risk for somebody to ha take care of a child in their home and that's just not the case. Um, I think every now and again cases get sensationalized and you'll have the one outlier or the one case that's on the news and it was a horrible situation but what we find most often is that after families learn that we're here to support and help kids and it's a skill you gain as a foster parent um, in helping families to feel comfortable about who you are and working together with families and we help families to do that foster families birth families the child's family of origin to all work together um, I think the most rewarding is um, being a part of children's lives and when they are returned to their birth family, seeing the love that um, is there and that you've helped them get over an obstacle and they were able to safely um, go back to their family. And um, the other rewarding for us is that we got four beautiful children from foster care. And when their birth families um, realized that they could not take care of them, they chose us to um, keep them and raise them as our own. The most rewarding thing I think has been we were able to adopt our daughter. Um, she came to us when she was one and it took about three years but we finally were able to adopt her and she is just happy and the joy of our lives now. So. Yeah. What's been the most rewarding for me has been the little progress things that you see like when he first came here, he's very quiet, wouldn't talk, very shy. Um, sometimes, especially with adults, now people come to the house, he's welcoming, comes out the door. He can sit at the table, not text. He knows how to talk to people. Um, and you gotta do that with me. I mean, I'm an extroverted person, but just really teaching him, you know, how do you engage people in conversation enough to be respectful and of people and things of that nature. Um, the other thing is, is seeing the progress that he's made, that he's a very smart young man. Just needed someone to kind of push him along, get tough, make sure he does the things he needs to do. Grades have significantly improved. And watching somebody's life be 150% better than it was just through little things. It, it's nothing great that I've done except I'm here every day, I'm on point, I'm, I'm here if he needs me, and I'm an advocate for him. And just to watch him blossom has been a great thing. I have been a foster parent for eight years. I think what really makes me co um, continue to be a foster parent is I really love the age group that they have allowed me to work with. I work with nothing but teenagers. Um, I work with specialized children. and. I just kind of fell in love with it. I just found my little niche in DSS and where I needed to be and what I need to do with children. And I kind of just love it. I just love the age. I just love the kind of care that, you know, I have to give to the children. And so I think if you kind of love it, you'll stick with anything that you like a lot. So I think that's what's a major factor in me being a foster parent. What we're finding is one of the really greatest needs that we have right now in our community when children enter foster care, it's usually not one small baby boy. Um, usually, rather, we get sibling groups of children, two, three children in one sibling group who need to be placed together. That's our greatest need. Um, also, we need to have families who are willing to open up their home and their hearts to teenagers who are in foster care. Oftentimes pe people are afraid to take kids who are older because they know they'll have a, lo a lot more baggage and maybe ex experiences, negative life experiences that might be challenging to handle. Um, 
and what I would like to say to people is to encourage people not to be afraid of that um, because there is that wraparound system of support that they will have. Um, there's financial uh, board payment that follows the child. There's not compensation for the foster parents, so you're totally doing this out of your own goodwill um, and volunteering to help kids in need. Um, but the board payment does assist with that somewhat. Um, a child who's age zero to five receives a board payment of $475 a month. A child who is age six to 12, it's $581 per month. And children 13 years old to sev through 17, it's $634 per month that you receive for a standard board rate. People need a couple of things in life, to know why they exist in the world and to have safety and security. And when you don't have safety and security, figuring out who you are in the world will never come if you're not safe. And so I feel good that I've provided a safe home for my foster son to be in. Um, I feel safe. Um, and I would just really encourage people to not count it out but just get the fact, the real facts from calling the professionals at Buncombe County DSS or professional uh, adoption, adoption of foster care agencies to find out more about it before they make their final decisions. But it is a good thing to do. Um, I encourage others to be foster parents um, because it's rewarding to you and you get to help, you know, a child. And um, it's a fun group of people to work with and, um, you know. Children are always fun to be with, so, and always having a new little one in the house is always exciting, someone new to come around. Yeah, it could be fun, um, and it's worth it. The kids need it. Yeah. Um, so if you want to include kids in your family and really want to um, have the challenge of it, step up and do it. There's a lot of kids that need it. Yeah, and I think a key piece, what he just said, include them in your family. Um, any child that comes in our home is part of the family and we, you know, if we're going out to dinner, okay, let's load up and go and, you know, if we're going somewhere other than, you know, taking, we won't take an infant to a water park or something like that, other than that, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just part of the family. Mm -hmm. They go to see the in-laws, oh, yeah. uh, out of state, so it doesn't limit you to travel, so, and our daughter's been on cruises as a foster child, so it's, yeah. it's worth it. Um, they need to have families. Mm -hmm. I think the thing is, you really need to um, just see if it's a fit. I always tell people try it. You know, there's, you lose nothing by going through the classes. You lose nothing by having a child in your home. But I think that it's your attitude, how you receive the child, how you receive um, what's coming into your home. Sometimes it's hard when a child comes into your home and they have all these behavior issues and you're like, I don't want to deal with this. You know, I have my children. They know what I expect from them. But you know, when a child comes into my home, they're just a person. They're just a child who needs to be loved. They're just a child who needs guidance. They're just a child who needs reassurance that their world is still safe and it's still okay. And that for me is enough, you know, that I am helping my community and helping somebody else. I never know if something like this ever could have happened to me. And I would want somebody to take my child in and treat them like that it was their own. If somebody is interested in becoming a foster parent in Buncombe County, um, they can give us a call at 250-5868 or um, email us at familiesforkids at buncombecounty.org families for kids at buncombecounty.org and we'll get information out to you we'll send you a packet of information as well um, and follow up with you to tell you about orientation class and the next upcoming map class those are the first steps it's absolutely free to inquire um, there's no commitment if you call us and we can share information with you um, so just to call to come out to orientation and find out about it it's totally free, no obligation. So if you were to come out and do that, I encourage you if you're interested or if you've ever even thought about it. Usually people think about it for a year or even more 
but if you've thought about it, it's okay to just go ahead and give us a call and we will give you some information that you can think about.